Good day. Um, my name is Engineer Skombo Zongove. I'm the Acting Director of Engineering Services at uh, the city of Blawai. I'm glad to share with you the services that we do provide in the Water Division, which is a branch under Engineering Services. Engineering Services is, um, consists of two branches the water branch as well as the roads branch. Um, today we are going to uh, share more on the water branch services. Um, our presentation will be in four parts. First, we'll share the infrastructure overview and then the services that are being provided in engineering services under water branch, the current um, strategies and projects that are ongoing, and then finally, the plans that we have in the near future. Uh, starting off with the infrastructure overview, our city is supplied with um, six supply dams which are located the south of the city. These are namely in Caesar, Inyankuni, Apa Nema, Loa Nema, Omzewane, and Dumchavezi Dams. To the northwest of the city, water is also drawn from groundwater. We have an aquifer uh, called the Nyamandov Aquifer. The Nyamandov Aquifer was uh, originally uh, established in 1992 when 77 bores were drilled. This was during a drought. Um, just recently, February 2021, there was the, decommission, there was the commissioning of uh, additional 20 high-yielding bores in the Epping Forest, which is an extension of the Nyamandov Aquifer. So the combination of Nyamandlovu and the six supply dams uh, have the capacity of giving us an aggregated uh, water supply of 165 megaliters a day. Um, we also come to the water treatment plants that uh, treat water for the city of Lawai. We have Nema. Nema was commissioned in 1940 uh, with a capacity of uh, 80 megaliters of water that it can treat per day. But currently, due to its old age, it's uh, giving us around 45% of that design capacity. We, uh, there is also Criterion Water Treatment Plant. First, it was commissioned in 1973 with the capacity to treat 90 megaliters of water per day. It was then later uh, expanded uh, in 1987 with an additional 90 megaliters of water. Now adding it up, it gives us 180 um, uh, megaliters of water. These are the two treatment plants that treat portable, safe water and supplying it into, this, into the city. Now, Nema Water Treatment Plant pumps its water through two uh, booster stations. One is Nema, which boosts water to Fenhill, an intermediate uh, booster station, which then pumps water to Tuli. Uh, Tuli Reservoir forms one of the six critical supply uh, reservoirs. We call them distribution reservoirs. There are six of them. Tuli supplies water to the eastern suburbs of the city, uh, most of them. Then uh, treated water at Criterion, it's a 90 megaliter reservoir. It uh, supplies water to Makwekwe Reservoir, which is, which is a 108 megaliter reservoir, which supplies around 36% of the west, eastern suburb, western suburbs uh, demand. Then we have other reservoirs. 
which is the uh, hillside, 6J, and rifle range, which are dotted around the city. Almost all this water gravitates to all our residents. Um, coming to the network in the city. The city is comprised of a uh, water network of uh, 2,365 kilometers and uh, 1,467 kilometers of sewer network. Um, just to give you an idea of how long that network is, you can drive from here to Deben, that will give you around 2,400 kilometers. This is how long the water network is in the city. Um, the age of the network is continuously uh, deteriorating. Over 60% of the water network is now over 55 years old. And um, it's a moving target if no meaningful interventions or investments are, are carried out. It is comprised of different pipe materials, the old earthenware clay pipes are still there underground and still in use. We have also the polyvinyl uh, chloride pipes or PVC pipes also serving the city. The asbestos cement pipes um, that are also comprising of almost 70% of the current network, although they are now being replaced to some extent as we, uh, during projects and also when we have uh, pipe bursts and leaks. Um, the connections in the city are over 165,000 uh, citywide. Now, after having shared the, the network, we also come to the wastewater treatment plants that um, treat water actually the wastewater in the city. We have 10 of these. There is uh, Waterford, is the smallest. Um, we have Southern Areas Sewage Treatment Plant, which is to the southern of the city, serving Ganini, Pumuda, Nketa, Gulumane, and a bit of Chabalana as well. Um, it's in two parts. There is plant one and plant two. We'll get into detail of what has happened at SAST under the projects that will follow that we'll discuss. There is also Magwegwe. Magwegwe are ponds. These are facultative ponds. Some know them as lagoons. Another form of um, lagoons are the Cowdery Park ponds as well. There is also Luveve, a uh, sewage treatment plant. And then the AZLB sewage treatment plants. They are in three parts. There is SOP1, SOP2, and SOP3. So in total, um, finally, there is also the Thorn Groove uh, wastewater treatment plant, which is mainly serving the industrial in the bit of uh, your residential from the, the neighboring Thorn Groove and other areas that are around there. So in total, this forms your t uh, the 10 uh, sewage treatment plants. They have a capacity of treating 80 megaliters of uh, wastewater in, uh, in the city. Now, coming to the services that are being provided under the, the water uh, division, we have uh, five sections, each being headed by a principal officer. Some are officers, uh, some are engineers. Uh, the first is the uh, office uh, that looks into supplies. Supplies is uh, a section that deals with the bulk water from the dams, the treating of that water, its conveyance, maintenance of the dams, uh, water treatment at Nemaid Fenhill, and also uh, it's responsible for the wastewater treatment plants the safe discharge of that effluent into our environment. Um, the, those that are interested in the uh, 
buying of uh, sludge. We do sell sludge from our wastewater treatment plants as part of manure. That is one of the services that we do and uh, provide. Coming to another section, which is a distribution section. Distribution, as the name suggests, is the, uh, predominantly the transportation of water, which is clean water after it has been treated, into this network that we have uh, just mentioned, the 2,365 kilometers of water network. And also the drainage of the waste water after it has been used in the various households, industry, commerce institutions into the treatment plants. So it's water, uh, transportation and wastewater drainage. Some of the services that are provided in the distribution section do include, if you are, if you are interested in water and sewer connections, we provide that service, water and sewer mains extensions, borehole drilling. Um, it's, uh, there are details that we can uh, share with you. You can also find some of this information on our city website in detail. Um, fire connections, we do work in, con uh, in, in conjunction with other departments in that area as well. Um, and a number of other services that we uh, do also provide, but here we're just sharing the major ones that uh, stakeholders are mainly interested in. Another area that we need to highlight is the state of our dams. Uh, as of uh, the 5th of July 2022, the dam levels were at 54.1%. They continued to decrease in uh, their levels. Uh, and this will get worse as we enter into the drier months of uh, August, September, October, and November before the onset of the rain season. Um, the city introduced uh, water shedding on the 10th of um, June uh, 2022. Uh, currently, we are at um, the 24-hour water shedding with the hope that if the demand is managed within the acceptable limits that we've set of 150 megaliters of water, this uh, regime of 24-hour shedding will be maintained uh, up until we get into the water months of August. This is when we can then re uh, review this regime of 24 hours and um, possibly consider the 48-hour. 48-hour water shedding means the city will now be receiving water five of the seven days in a week. We are encouraging our residents to continue to conserve water, uh, desist from using hose pipes, and uh, stick to the allocations that are there, 450 liters uh, per household in the high density suburbs. An example of a high density suburb, Makokova, Pumuda, Kulumane, those are our high density suburbs. The, uh, the low-density suburbs, if you stay in Machamplope, your site, your, the allocation is 650 litres per day. Uh, uh, usage of water within these allocations will not attract any penalties. However, if any over-usage of consumption is uh, uh, detected, penalties do come into effect. Um, the system so far, as we have mentioned, is designed to uh, give the city around 160, 65 megaliters of water. That is when our dams are full and um, Nyamandlovu is giving its maximum of 15 megaliters of water. However, we do have challenges in the city. Um, Previously, in the 80s and the 90s, it was a known fact that the drought would um, be realized or would be an event that you would see after every 10 years. From 2000 to 2010, that slightly changed and um, they became more frequent, five years, five years. 
And again in 2010 to current, the current data indicates that uh, droughts have become even more frequent. It's now almost every other three years you don't have um, good rains in the city. The last that we got of good rains was in the year 2017. So far in the last two years, our dams have never been full. The last rains that we, uh, that we received in March, our dams were at 70%. And um, we then do encourage our residents to continue to um, conserve water. We do have a number of challenges, of course, as a city. Some of them uh, we usually then share with you on our media, different platforms, newspapers, uh, WhatsApp and other, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, challenges like power outages, pump breakdowns, leaks and bursts. These are some of the challenges that we do face. But one of the major challenges that is now coming in the fall is the high usage of water. Demand is going up. Giving an example, in 2011, the city's demand was around 110 megaliters of water. Uh, it went up to around 125 megaliters of water around 2015. But guess what? Now, as we uh, speak, our demand is hovering around 160, 155, 160 megaliters. So it's on a uh, sharp rise, and um, it's something that we need to underline and um, manage together as a city. Um, another section that uh, we, we, we do have in the water branch is the water quality uh, monitoring and assurance. This is a very critical section. Uh, its role is very key to the safe delivery of potable water to every resident in the city of Lawai. Its, uh, its, its use is mainly the monitoring of water, its quality, both chemical and uh, bacteriological. Um, it's being, the monitoring is done very frequently, daily, uh, when the water is treated at the two treatment plants is the monitoring of the residual chlorine that is in the water. As the water is uh, released into the reservoirs, water is supposed to uh, be stored in these reservoirs at uh, 2 milligrams a liter I mean, uh, of, um, of, of, of chlorine. This uh, concentration of chemical of chlorine is reduced as the water travels or is being transport, transported in the system because of uh, various uh, <clears throat> impurities or other, other, other demands for the chlorine in the system. But it's designed in such a way that by the time it gets to the tap, there is still enough and safe chlorine for uh, anyone to use or to drink that water. It's still safe. As well as it, at the distribution reservoirs, we have installed some dosing equipment to continuously uh, maintain the chlorine at the optimum level so that if there's any reduction, it is boosted at each of these sections to continue to give our residents clean and safe water. The monitoring of also any contamination is the responsibility of this section. Uh, through the different labs that are located, one, uh, for potable water at the Criterion water treatment plant and for um, wastewater at the wastewater lab, the microbiological um, lab to detect or monitor uh, issues to do with wastewater. Um, another section that is there um, is the electromechanical section. Electromechanical, as the name suggests, is a section that is uh, responsible for the maintenance of all the equipment that is there in the city, be it in engineering services, the pumps, the motors, coming even to the street lights, the traffic lights. 
It also does uh, provide services to other departments. For example, uh, in the health services department, there are cold rooms that do store some of our very key vaccines, like the COVID vaccine. We do have our key staff maintaining the, be it the, 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 the cold rooms, the refrigeration, the generators, that do provide uh, 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 power to these critical services. So it provides operation and maintenance of all this critical equipment across uh, the city. Another section is the projects section. Projects, as the name suggests, this is where all the design is done, contract management is done, construction supervision is done, the expertise that reside within that section are responsible for um, tendering of the projects, water and sewer projects, managing contractors, be it private con uh, developers or contractors, through regular meetings, uh, production of reports, and also inspections. Inspections are an integral part of quality monitoring and at the end of the day producing quality services to our residents. This is a crucial section as also even the evaluation of any proposals that do come into the city are also looked into. Um, another key section um, that uh, probably we need also to look at is the, this of course cut across is the strategic planning section. Strategic planning can be understood as the consultants of the engineering services department. They have the pulse of the city in terms of its needs. They assess, like what you see a doctor does to assess, to check your BP. They also then check if there are any problems in the city. And then they come up with solutions, write proposals, look for funding, and then they end over to the project. The other crucial section is the GIS section. The GIS is responsible for the mapping of the, all the infrastructure, the assets that are there in the city, be it a water meter, be it even the dam itself. All these dams have been mapped under GIS to the point that all the detail that you require, the age of the dam, it has been captured. Give you an example even of a street light. If you click on a street light in uh, Robert Mugabe, uh, that street light will tell you the type of bulb, when it's supposed to be replaced. Here it's now talking to asset management. So GIS also plays a crucial role in uh, complementing asset management in the city. So the assets, all the assets in the city are captured and recorded with all the attribute data under the GIS section. GIS has also played a key role in the region. By region, I mean Matebele and North, Matebele and South, Ibulawayo, and also Midlands. Through um, capacity building uh, of the smaller cities that are around uh, 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 Bulawayo. So these are some of the key services that are being provided in the city of Bulawayo. Now coming to the third section of our presentation today is um, the current strategies that are in place in the city. I'll give you a brief background of uh, where this is coming from. From 2000, year 2000 to year 2008, during the hyperinflationary period, there was less maintenance of the water and wastewater infrastructure. So deterioration crept in. But in 2010, um, the city went on to partner with Etewini municipality and um, uh, uh, some, some other organizations from South Africa to secure funding. And then in 2013, a water and wastewater master plan was commissioned. This is a document that guides the city in terms of any investment, developments for the next 20 years up to 2032. So far, we have done 
10 years of that. And um, just to share uh, with you that um, under the water part of that master plan, a total of 121 million US dollars is required within the next 20 years for the city to be able to have uh, upgraded, replaced all the old infrastructure that is there uh, in the city. But as of 2021, last year, the city was supposed, was expected to have expended or received funding to the tune of 390, 390 million US dollars. But so far, uh, as we'll share in, in a bit, not so much has been received uh, to date. But uh, that's what we receive, we are using um, to continuously sustain the infrastructure that is there. On wastewater, a total of 100, 404 million US dollars is expected for the next 20 years. But um, discounting the immediate to short-term uh, requirements from 2013 to 2017, um, around 175 million US dollars was supposed to have been received by the city of Fulawai for the investment in wastewater infrastructure. But to date, from 2010, a number of um, funding through government, borrowing, loans, and uh, grants, a total 71 million US dollars. I'll just mention a few. We secured a loan from IDBZ uh, to the tune of 6.47 million. Uh, we had a Bowser donated program from the Australian government to the tune of 10 million. Uh, we had a BWAP program from UK aid to the tune of 6 million. Uh, GIZ funding to the tune of 1.6 million. Bank ABC loan to the tune of 13.7 uh, million. We have uh, also Dutch funding from the Wittens Evidence International Waterworks to the tune of uh, 250,000. This was last, uh, the last five years. But recently, in February, we signed another uh, five-year program, so yeah, to the tune of 1.2 million uh, US dollars. Uh, African Development Bank, this is the biggest funding that we have received so far since dollarization to the tune of uh, 33 million. I'll say 33 million because the difference of the 37 million is the contribution from the city of Fubulawayo. And then the current um, funding streams that we will discuss. So in total, if we're going to discuss, we to consider the investments that we said we required by now, by 2022, uh, there's a funding gap, a huge gap, of 659 million US dollars that is required. However, in line with the city's vision uh, of a smart and uh, transformative city by 2024, we have not been sitting. A number of projects have been going on, and I'm here to highlight just a few of these. One flagship project is the African Development Bank grant. A number of projects have been done. Six huge pumps were installed at Nema in Fenio, three at Nema, three at, uh, at Fenio. These are huge pumps which deliver 90 megaliters of water a day, of raw water to Criterion. There is also the upgrading of the Criterion water treatment plant. Um, taking a tour of Criterion water treatment plant a few years back, you would notice that our operators would be running up and down, manually operating some of the crucial equipment. But uh, thanks to the African Development Bank grant, some of these things they are doing in the comfort of their offices by pressing a few buttons to monitor and run the crucial. This is optimization of labor and efficiency. Um, there is also telemetry and SCADA. Telemetry and SCADA is a concept where you monitor the, the services that you are providing remotely. For example, uh, an operator at Criterion can see the pumps that are running at Nema, at Fenio, and even get to the extent of switching them remotely, sitting in the office at Criterion. 
This is the transformation that we're talking of, of a smart city. Um, such uh, also can be said of the southern area sewage treatment plant. In 2000, it was supposed to be, decom to be commissioned to come into operation, but we mentioned the hyperinflation, so nothing uh, took off. But recently, in April of 2022, I'm also happy to announce that SAST uh, was commissioned with the new equipment, new technology, and it now has the capacity to treat 21 megaliters of wastewater safely. The advantage of this is that it's got its um, down, downstream effects, benefits. If uh, SAST drains its wastewater into Kamidem, Kamidem is an integral part of the infrastructure in the city of Lawa in that that water has the potential to produce at plus or, plus or minus 15 megaliters of recycled water. Um, when this water is treated to secondary use, it can be, uh, up, it can be used or utilized by the industry, uh, such as the power gener for power generation. If you consider 15 megaliters being recycled and being used in industry, the same industry will then release 15 megaliters of water for other uses in the city. 15 megaliters is almost equivalent to water that we receive from Umchave's dam. So it's equivalent to a dam. It also does it becomes an additional source of water automatically. Um, one of the critical uh, projects that we also uh, benefited under the African Development Bank was the installation of 18,109 water meters, new water meters in the residence. 69 bulk meters were also installed. 174 kilometers of new water pipes were laid. That is driving from Bulawayo to Gweru. That is all network of pipes, new, that were laid in the city. 21 kilometers of wastewater pipes were laid. And um, in Kaudri Park, Tanan Mulle, the installation of uh, 4,600 water meters that were procured under the same uh, funding. And also, talking of smart, the installation of smart pressure reducing valves. Smart in the sense that you can now set a pressure rating for during the day and another pressure rating during the night. This reduces leaks, it reduces best. One key point to note is where the same Piera V was installed in Chavalala, um, in Guabalanda. In Guabalanda, residents attest to the positive impact of such uh, components that we have installed, that leaks and, I mean, best have almost become a thing of the past. Very few interruptions. So imagine the whole city having pressure reducing valves and we don't have to be shedding water through opening and closing of valves, but just by setting two pressure ratings across the city. That is being smart and transformative. Um, another key project that we have uh, benefited from, we've mentioned waterworks. It is now in the second phase of the, of the other five years, so it's now going into, the, into 10 years. Um, it's more on the softer side of benefits. What do I mean? Capacity building. Three young engineers have benefited in a program called Young Engineers Professionals. Two ladies and one uh, um, male engineer have benefited. Being exposed and interacting with other over 25 countries worldwide. And um, this is a success story. One lady engineer benefited from the master's program in the Delft, Netherlands, and uh, has already graduated and has come back. Another benefit of the Waterworks program are the exchange programs. Over the last six years, different experts from the Netherlands have been seconded to the city of Bulawayo in the areas of ICT, GIS, financial management, and also water demand management. Uh, we also have had also our engineers being also seconded to the Netherlands to go and learn 
the, how first world countries run their systems. So these are some of the benefits that uh, the Water Waste Program has brought, to, has brought to the city of Lawai. Also to mention on the uh, physical equipment and uh, benefits, a vehicle was also procured under this program. And um, 8,818 water meters have been installed uh, in Tlalan uh, and also in Tumban. Um, 1,722 of sewer connection materials have been procured uh, in the process of being installed in Karikai Tlalan area in Kautri Park. Another funding that we have uh, uh, received and also it's in progress is under UNICEF funding, working in conjunction with Africa Ahead and also the Swedish uh, uh, Embassy to the tune of almost 300,000. A number of uh, benefits that we can mention is the procurement of protective clothing for our teams on the ground, tools and equipment, and also the equipment, the installation of meters in Gulumane, uh, part of Nketa, and also, uh, recently, there's work in progress in the laying of uh, a new pipe uh, to boost pressure of uh, over 600 properties, 635 properties in Pumula Habik. I think those who stay in that area usually do not have water during the day. This should become a thing of the past if this pipeline is commissioned including another area in Kuluman, just uh, after in Temba uh, 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 traffic lights. There is another area there that uh, uh, experiences low pressure. Coming to Makokoba, Makokoba has been having challenges in wastewater, sewer blockages. Uh, the engineers together with Africa had analyzed where this bottleneck was. And uh, as I am uh, presenting you today, um, I, should I should be able to say that 811 kilo uh, millimeters of new sewer pipe, 400 millimeter diameter GRP pipe, is being laid using the community uh, in Makokoba that was selected to work in that project. And once that layer project is commissioned, it will unblock all the sewers that were affecting 2,000 properties in Makokoba. Uh, this is another um, success story. And also to mention that under the same funding, um, we have a success story in that the model that we have been using under this funding is currently being profiled to be shared with other cities and to be working as a model of how you eat the elephant bit by bit and still realize benefits and results for the, for the residents of the city of Fulawa. This is a first in the country under the same funding. Um, another funding is GIZ, um, where uh, equipment has been bought. And um, I should mention the procurement of a new jetting equipment recently uh, donated to the city of Fulawa, which will actually assist uh, the sewer teams in uh, improving uh, the, the response to clearing of sewers. I'll then also highlight a number of projects that are currently ongoing under private-public partnership with private contractors. This is also another new model that the city adopted. And um, just to mention a few, we have Mkanini, where 155 stands have since been commissioned in May of 2022. Another one, Yem again, 267 stands that are soon to be commissioned in Cowdery Park. There is progress on 91 stands in uh, Norwood Tracks, just a bit close to Cowdery Park. 2,045 stands are expected to be commissioned once complete. Yem Kanini Phase 4, uh, there are 730 stands. And Yem Kanini Phase 4, and uh, Lot 3, 272 stands. Uh, are uh, now at a design stage. And another 743 stands also in Mkwanini are uh, at design stage. Finally, the projects that we um, have put on the table for, 
for future uh, planning, um, I will mention, uh, not in, in, in detail, but to highlight some of these. One key project that we are looking forward to is the Lake Gwai Shangani project. Once the project is commissioned, we expect to receive in total of 220 megalitres of water. Under phase one of this project, when the Cowdery Park water treatment plant is complete, 80 megalitres of water will be pumped to Magweko Reservoir, eliminating problems of water in that area, totally uh, supplying water to 36% of the city. Under phase two, uh, we expect about 140 megalitres of water to be delivered to Criterion. And once we have 145, 140 megalitres of water under phase two, we can forget about water shedding in the city into the extent of about 50 years to come in the horizon. So it totally then assists and uh, remove any water challenges in the city. Other projects that we have put on the table is the upgrading of the Inyankuni booster station. The Inyankuni booster station pumps water from Inyankuni Dam to Nema Waterworks. Once this is upgraded, the water that is currently being delivered will almost double. And um, there is also the inline booster stations from Chabezi to Nema. This should also improve output of raw water delivery into the city. Another key project is the upgrading of the remaining uh, Sousa pumps that we have at Nema and Fenio. Remember we mentioned the new flow safe pumps that were installed under the African Development Bank. We also do have some other older pumps that we still feel uh, are in need of upgrading. And once these are put in as new pumps, the city will have enough capacity to deliver water. In case of any breakdown, we know we have got other pumps on standby to continuously give water to the city. Another um, quick win is the construction of a bypass, which was um, an analysis that was uh, uh, discovered when uh, designs were done under the African Development Bank for Criterion. It's a quick win. If 500,000 US dollars is received, another additional bypass will improve water delivery or to, the, to the city. There is also the linking of Criterion Water Treatment Plant with Thule through the construction of a new booster station that will deliver water from Criterion to Tuli. It's linking to the Lake Guayshangani project. Once that 140 megalitres is delivered to Criterion, there is expansion of uh, the clear water reservoir, the construction of a booster station, deliver water to Tuli, and that stabilises water to the eastern areas. The duplication of a dedicated line to to Magwegwe from Criterion, and also the construction of another reservoir uh, to supply water to Range More will also then be added on as an additional project in the near future, so that as the city expands, there are no water challenges in the city. All these things are all contained in the Water and Wastewater Master Plan, and the city is already envisaging the need to look and consider all these projects. So funding, once it's secured, all these can be put into play. Uh, the upgrading of the Thorn Grove sewage treatment plant, it's in two parts. Once it's treated, it's upgraded. Thorn Grove has the capacity to produce reclaimed water. We need reclaimed water for our stadiums. One of these is Baba Fields. We need water for Baba Fields. We need water for our centenary park and our, and our other smaller parks dotted around the city, and for our children in the different schools to keep the city green. It's also in line of a smart and a transformative city, usage of secondary water, and avoid using very expensive potable water for irrigating our stadiums and our grounds. The rehabilitation of major outfall sewers, Mazai River is smelly. We need to upgrade this. We are alive to these challenges, and plans are in place once funding is secured to upgrade all these collapsed old uh, pipes that convey storage to some of our treatment wings. This we are very much aware, and once funding is secured, we'll have all these uh, problems eliminated. Another, pro another project is the non-revenue water reduction. 
non revenue water talks to losses in the city in terms of water. Continuous monitoring of non revenue water through installation of new meters, household connections, pipe upgrading is also one key strategy that needs to be considered and is continuously being done through different funding that, we, that are, are being received in the city. With those uh, uh, remarks, I would like to say thank you for sharing with you um, the services that are provided in the city under the Water Branch. For more information, you can visit the city website and uh, we can also, you can also visit the uh, offices at Tower Block 5th floor where our qualified engineers and officers are ready to assist and help you. Thank you.